بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمد ونصلي على رسول الكريم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته إن شاء الله today we beginning by توفيق الله سبحانه وتعالى only the book أحوال القبور وأحوال أهلها إلى النشور by Imam Ibn Rajab al-Hambali رحمه الله the meaning the horrors of the grave and the conditions of its people until the day of resurrection until resurrection until the day of judgment Imam Ibn Rajab al-Hambali رحمه الله it was from Iraq and he, Rahimullah, he was an alim, his father was an alim, grandfather was an alim. He passed away in Damascus and many, many, he's well known, one of the superstars of this ummah in terms of ilm, a great jurist and faqih, and many, many books, nearly 23 works are attributed to him. And each of these books can be considered uh, in its own right uh, masterpiece. <coughs> and it's said about him that he was known for his tahajjud, his praying in the night, and his ibadah, his worship. And he used to have majlis of reminder, of tathkir, reminding about akhirah, reminding about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, reminding about deen, bayans, talks, you could say. And Ibn Nasr al-Din, he mentioned that he had majalis, that uh, the effect on the hearts were very quick. And the people generally, uh, they were very beneficial in Mubarak, the, his gatherings, his speeches, and beneficial to the people. And he, um, and the hearts inclined uh, towards him. And he, Rahmullah, passed away in 795 after Hijrah, meaning about 650 years ago, approximately in Damascus. And he's buried there, Rahmullah. Uh, the, his khutbah or his introduction, so this is, we'll cover just today the introduction to the topic of the book. Um, so the Shaykh Rahmullah Qala Shaykh Al-Imam Al-Alim Al-Allam Abu Al-Faraji Abd Al-Rahman Ibn Shaykh Al-Salih Shihabuddin Ahmed Al-Rajab al Hamdul Rahmullah So this is his titles uh, and names and so forth um, And he Rahmullah, his name is Abd Al-Rahman uh, But he was known as Abu Al-Faraj And he Rahmullah says Alhamdulillah Alladhi askina ibadu hadi al-dar Waja'alahum manzil al-safr min al-asfar Waja'al al-dar al-akhir fi dar al-qarar وجعل بين الدنيا والآخرة برزخا يدل على فناء الدنيا باعتبار وهو في الحقيقة إما روض من رياض الجنة أو حفرة من حفر النار فسبحان من يخلق ما يشاء ويختار ويرفق عباد الأبرار في جميع الأقطار وسبق رحمته بعباد غضبه عباد غضبه وهو الرحيم الغفار so how do you translate that into English? <laughs> Can I'll try? <laughs> Inshallah, forgive me. Uh, but uh, he said, "All praise is due to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, who made uh, the slaves his banda, his slave live live in this world, and made it a stage from of the journey from the many stages that a human being goes through, and made the uh, the akhira, the hereafter, his permanent abode, and he made the dunya uh, between the dunya and akhira the barzakh." Uh, which indicates to the end of this world individually and also it says that's the marking point for us that this life when we end, leave this when we die that that stage is called barzakh between the akhira and this dunya the the what is in the grave what we experience in the grave is called barzakh it's a barrier so it, it's a barrier that comes behind us blocks us to coming back into this world and in reality his grave will be either a garden from the gardens of paradise or a pit from the pits of hell. Um, and, subhan uh, or, and pure is that being who created and he chooses as he wishes and he has mercy, he's soft and gentle with his slaves, the, sorry, the good ones in all the lands and his uh, mercy has overcome his wrath for his slaves and he's the most uh, merciful and the most forgiving. And he says that I praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for his bounties and I thank him and he uh, upon those who are grateful Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala even pours more uh, bounties. And he prays Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He says that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala um, created insan for eternity, um, never to end. In the hereafter, human being will never die. There's no, people try to end their life. No, but human being is created forever. Either we'll be in Jannah. Uh, either be in Jahannam forever or he'll be in Jannah forever at the end after everything is done and dusted. Even those who enter Jahannam, if they have belief, Iman, they enter Jahannam, eventually they'll enter Jannah forever. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made him that he has to transfer, he has to, uh, from one stage of life to the next stage of life. And the pious, they brought our attention always 
the early Muslims, Sahaba, Tamitim, always they're reminded of Akhirah. As I did in the Jummah Khutbah, when I was uh, reading the Khutbah, that the Khutbah, the main, the bulk of it was from Abu Bakr Siddiq, anhu, his Jummah Khutbah. If you see the Khutbah, and I explain the conditions at the time of Abu Bakr Siddiq, anhu, all the problems that were happening with the Ridda Wars, with the people not paying zakat, and all the sort of problems that were happening. If you read the history, it's a very uh, tumultuous and difficult time. But Abu Bakr Siddiq, uh, anhu, if you see the Khutbah, there's no politics mentioned. In this, this, and this Khutbah is repeating many times. And he's not talking about current affairs. He's talking about the real news, which is the news of Akhirah. Because that's Iman bil Ghaib. Uh, Iman bil Ghaib. Iman is on the unseen. Iman is to accept news that you haven't seen with your own eyes. Can you prove Akhirah scientifically? You can give Aqli the leads. Look, there's no justice fully in this world. There'll be just in half the, But you can't prove Akhirah per se, except through Wahi revelation. Iman on revelation, what is in the Quran and what is in the Hadith of the Prophet. You can't prove. You can prove the existence of God. Through the sign and so forth, as we expect, and as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala spelled out in the Quran for us, his signs and so forth. But it's still Iman bil Ghaib. Iman is to accept news, khabar, that you have not seen yourself. It is to trust the Prophet وسلم, to what the news that he brings, وسلم, that he's come from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so he says, furthermore, he says, uh, he quotes ayat al Quran. Uh, after all the Billahi Min Shaitan Rajim, Simla Rahman Rahim, Wa min waraihim barzakhun ila yawmi yubaathun. And behind them is a barrier, is a barzakh, until they are resurrected. Uh, and this is Surah Mu'minun, ayat number 100 or 99. And Al Mujahid, one of Tabi'een, he said, barzakh is a barrier between uh, death and return to this dunya. And uh, it is also said, it is between death and resurrection. When you die, and before you resurrect in Day of Judgment, this uh, time period, it's called Barzakh. Al Hassan al Basri rahimullah says, he said, What is Barzakh? Barzakh is these graves between you and the Akhirah. It is these graves between you and the hereafter. Atal al Khurasani rahimullah says that Barzakh is the Barzakh Muddatum ma bayna dunya wal Akhirah. It's the period between this dunya and the Akhirah, and so forth. And Imam al Rajab Hamdali rahimullah says, Many of my friends ask me, many ulama, you see in the past, he says, Many ulama. Many of my friends ask me that you have to write this book. Collect all the riwayat related to death, qabr, barzakh, the condition of the grave. So therefore, he said, I do this because uh, because it's an admonition for the hearts, for the one who hears it. When you hear about the grave, the reality of the grave, and it's not far away. I mentioned the other day someone passed away in a car accident, 18 years old. We've seen so many times in front of us, most fruit that fall off the tree are ripe. Some, sometimes small ones also fall off as well. So it's an admonition uh, for the hearts. And it uh, brings into existence into the heart. Um, it creates that uh, awareness, alertness, and wakefulness in the heart. Uh, it wakes the person up, removes the ghafl of the person. So I made istikhara to Allah. To write this book to, from the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, from the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, from what the early Muslims have said, the salaf, they said that, and the wise sayings, their poetry, their sayings, and so forth, related to the grave. And I've come, it's 350 pages, because I've summarized it into 250 pages. So it must have been much extensive to make it easy because it becomes too, he says, because it's, uh, uh, it becomes too long, people get bored. And uh, it's too much, too much to, so I may com compact it into this book. And so I ask Allah subhanahu wa help. So he divided the book into 13 chapters, and I'll just summarize and we'll finish with that today. This is just an introduction, then we'll get into the first chapter next week, inshallah. He said the first chapter is re re the condition at the time when the person dies and enters the grave, the questioning in the grave, how the grave is expanded and how, how it's constrained and tightened for the ones who's punished, and how the person will see his place in Jannah or in Nar, Allah protect us. The second chapter is about these grave qabr speaking, how it welcomes a person who's good, how it taunts a person as a punishment who's uh, evil, so that actual qabr speaks to the person. The third thing is the gathering of the dead uh, at the dead person and the questions they ask him, the souls of the dead. The fourth is, this is a ch each chapter we'll go through inshallah, at the, uh, the amal gathering in the grave, collecting because it's a container of deeds. So good amal will have a form, bad amal sins will have a form. The good will protect the person, comfort the person, surround the person. And the, the evil sins that will 
uh, will come in a form that will be used as a punishment. The fifth chapter is that um, the presentation of Jannah every morning and evening to the people of uh, the good people and for the sinful people they place in Jahannam every morning as a punishment will be shown to them. And the uh, sixth, and they mentioned the hadith that the wind will blow from Jannah through a window. They can see their place just to... Uh, they, it's like a prelude, like a um, before they go to Jannah. The sixth is the punishment of the grave and the bounties in the grave, the rewards in the grave. The seventh chapter is the souls meeting in Barzakh and visiting each other. The eighth is what, what has been narrated in re- relation to the dead. Um, uh, when people give them salam, they visit the grave. Do they reply or not when they give salam? And the ninth is uh, the place of the... Uh, souls after in Barzakh, where the souls go, and the tenth is the mention of the uh, graves and its darkness and the light in the grave, and the benefit that the dead get from the du'as of those who are alive, and how they receive those du'as in um, you know in their favor as gifts. That eleventh is uh, the dead visiting uh, uh, the graveyard and taking admonition from that. The twelfth is the is mustahab to remember dead, dead and to reflect upon it and the condition of the early Muslims regarding that. And the last one is the some of the sayings of the early Muslims uh, regarding uh, the admonitions of the grave. May Allah give us understanding and tawfiq to practice what we say in here.